Hi everyone. So this time I wanted to make a spherical box and uh, as you can see it turned out okay. But uh, the sphere not so much and uh, you'll see uh, where my mistake was and uh, uh, how I fixed it I guess. And although it's not a sphere so but I still managed to save it and get a useful nice end grain thin one box and uh, the point of this video I guess is that we all make mistakes and uh, it's the matter of uh, how you get around those and uh, how to fix them and uh, get something useful in the end of the day so let's go uh, I've made many of many boxes and uh, I've made uh, spheres so I want to incorporate those two uh, got a lovely piece of maple here it's a little bit darker than your usual maple it's a nice warm color um, and I have here a very sophisticated uh, set of uh, jigs so this is the outside diameter it's 70 mil a little bit less than three inches and this is the inside um, nothing fancy uh, I don't need it to be very smooth or exact perfect sphere if it's good uh, for the eye and on the touch on the hands it's good enough uh, yeah and we'll progress first by uh, making this piece round for that I'm going to use this uh, 20 mil continental spindle gouge that we sharpened on the sharpening video so usually I put my hand like so uh, to contain shavings around the lathe otherwise it will want to fly everywhere so you can start with the handle really low and just raise it until you get the shavings like this and just push it forward Okay, a little bit here. I don't need it to be smooth. From the gouge, I can do it with a skew raise it up high the rest goes I put it on this piece uh, over the center of the blade axis <coughs> you raise the the edge over the the piece drops it slightly you find the bevel and you want it to cut it the bottom part bottom third of the cutting edge like so once you find it, you just move it forward. Now that's smooth. Like that. And the other side. Usually the finish that comes of the skew is something special you know I want to make a tenon on both sides and I do that with the skew peeling cut like so And the other side. Now I want a around 70 mil diameter, so that will be around like so. But uh, the half is obviously 35 mil. But let's say this will be the bottom part. 
or the part where where I'll have the lip for the uh, for the lid. So I want that at least 45 mil for now, and that would be here. Now once I've cut the tenon on both sides, I can part this off. Now you get this. So this is the lead part and this is the base part with the lip. Uh, I can probably twist this apart, there we go. So the first thing is to make a lid. Uh, I'll just screw this up a tiny bit. Like so and the cross Now you can do this as well with the spindle gun. Close the flute. Once you're in the wood, open it up and slowly to the center. Now that's very polished surface. So this is my interior uh, template. I can put it uh, up to the wood and the calipers and just watch the other point line up like so. So this is the interior. Now the fastest way to hollow it out is to use a, a back cut. Uh, which I learned from Richard Raffin. So you start at the middle, like a bore a hole. You can even well, go like this. So, and just drop the handle. If you're getting like this vibration, this part is uneven. This is the part where you lean the gouge. So. So the rest of it I can smooth it out with the uh, scraper. So the rest is high enough so at the center point I'm slightly uh, higher with, than the level for, uh, with the handle. And as I progress to the side I can drop the handle because the angle would be less than 90. So. So at this point I just want to get a general shape, like so. So f firstly I want to get to the to the line, but from the oh we're almost there. Great. I'm gonna take a skew as I have it here on the bench and. The connection will be, the, the longer it is, it's better to get a suction fit, but for this uh, kind of box it's small and uh, it will be 
uh, ob sphere so I don't have too much to to play with so I will go up to eight millimeters maybe so this is straight in but I wanna this is exaggerated I wanna go like this but just slightly so the opening is the narrowest part of the lid like so like that you can chew this up make it slightly inward but just slightly now this is how it looks like now so there is a lip for connection and this is the hollow part and this probably will be yeah this won't take long so I won't put on the dust collection it really flashes the the wood on the camera and it doesn't look all that well so this is the first time to have it pointed at the wall so I'm curious to see how it looks on the camera on the screen while I edit so this is linseed oil turn up the speed and melt the wax so the next step is you can see it The surface is just something special with the wax on it. So the next thing is to make a base. This is low peel cut. And we can go across the center. this has to be sharpened now so this is the lid I'm going to make it slightly bigger so I mark just you won't be able to see it it's just here that's a little bit less I can go a little bit more than that that's the depth of the uh, tenon if you will so for this I'll just remove the bulk of it with the peeling cut to the line and one more time like so now we can check the fit so we're nowhere near close that's fine so what I want to do first is just slightly taper the first part of the tenon this is now low peel so that will be peeling this is low peel you raise the handle a bit Richard Raffin explains it really well so that's slight taper now that fits on at the middle. Currently the, the lid fits in the middle, right here. That's the highest point. Now what and that's snug. Now what I wanna do, this is lower and I want this part to be lower. So the the box will the lid will slightly be looser when it's all closed, but it will it will get 
tighter as you're trying to open it and as you open it it will make a pop hopefully if I don't mess mess up the fit that's always a possibility you know I, don't, I just want to undercut the shoulder a bit like so and now with the skew just uh, I tilt it up and this has a obviously a, a, a point which is going to hit the wood first you don't want to hit it here as you as it will bang it over so lightly here and just lightly low peel like so let's see okay so that's a little bit tighter will the green match it should pretty pretty close but not all the way but it's close enough and you hear that but that will probably be okay but I want to get it a little bit more at the bottom just slightly okay I'm happy with that now you can go like so the rest needs to go up a bit looks feels smooth enough to sand and that's it we'll just sand that when you have two pieces of wood meeting it's nice to have some kind of transition so when we used to make a lot of windows and uh, uh, doors and such we always put uh, like a big roof or something where the seam is so when the wood will expand and contract it will won't be so visible and you won't feel it actually that's the better part to say Or maybe we'll put that here as well because although it's same grain and it won't move as much it can with seasonal movement and if you put a wig groove somehow the hands the fingers you know just glide over the surface and you expect uh, to be like a dip where the wig groove is so you won't notice the if the move if the wood did shrink or expand slightly so that's the part done as well let's see how it fits again 
nice now this will go back to the centers and since we cut everything through it should run through and that's okay that's good so this is roughly the center I could have just measure it before but it doesn't have to be all that exact so our finishing points are here just set that up so for this you can use a skew use the point Like I said, it does need a sharpening. Or you can use a spindle gouge, which is on this occasion, I have, I feel like I have a little bit more over control I'll do the same on the other side That's the rough shape. Rough shape is done. you can mark it as well with the pencil so this part here and on this side this part okay we are very close on this side I believe that's even it now while it's all center up like so and like so this off like that like that so that's now I have here uh, just a piece of wood that has a tenon on it so it can go into chuck and this is dipped so the ball can be seated inside I might have to chew this up we'll see and this is for the tailstock just have to adapt to whatever you can use so this goes inside the tail uh, stock like a spur drive you can re remove this part the revolving spike and but this one still revolves so there is a little less friction so this is the box so far the 
thickness is it's nice and even it fits nicely almost a matching grain so when I try to squeeze it it wants to separate apart so what I'm going to do what I can do is 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 <laughs> I guess I'll just have to go really gently so this is now like a bolt orientation so it's cross grain you have to remember that I didn't like that sound any particular what I've done I've reversed it like in this orientation into chuck and I'll just clean this knob off because initially you want to able to return it uh, uh, rotate it like 90 degrees like so and you turn this part away uh, to the jig like so but what I've made wrong is just a tiny it's nice fit lid but uh, I should have made it a bit tighter so it will can, uh, it will hold itself a little bit better but it is what it is so now this is back to this orientation so finish it like so Now you can do it like this as well, you just have to be more precise. The other method is a little bit better, but hey, it is, it is what it is. Sound works off. I believe as a turner you need to know how to adapt when stuff like this happens. I never made or never had the need to make one of these but okay that's the lid part done let's see how we're going to grab this one it would be nice if I could nope. okay I can grab it from the inside but I don't want to damage the surface so you grab yourself some of these now I want I want the box the base to butt up the butt up next to the chuck so it runs through like so and just lightly expand since this is end grain you don't want to split it. like I said you can do it like this to get a perfect sphere 
you just have to be more precise with your tool now that's almost there I want to get this nibble just lightly and I wanna yes. like that So again, oil. I'm using rag here. I mean, it's common sense that you don't wrap it around your fingers. The old masters, me and my class, uh, they used to scare us with a story about another older master who want to cut a string on the bensa and the way he do it was he wrapped one part of the string on the on this part of the finger the other on this part really stretch it so in his mind it would cut easier <laughs> and uh, I, see, I think you can see where this is going so that's the way they scare us uh, with that story obviously it's probably not true no one is that I won't say dumb but okay that came out really good let's see how they meet let me just clean this part out from the dust. Oh, that's not bad. Right? That's aligned, sort of. Should we cut it on the benzo in half? Somewhere around here. Here, which a bit. It will disguise itself, it won't be such sore in the eye, but I can put it like so.